Thanks. Okay. As Christians, we believe that you cannot separate freedom from goodness. Okay. And so, again, following what I mentioned about freedom being first, you might say that the, the secular culture values not freedom but free will. Or the ability to choose. Christian freedom is a freedom for doing what is good. Right? It's always in service of the good. Right? Free will means just to be free from constraints. Right? To have no law, to have no moral law imposed upon you. Right? And there's something really good about free will. Right? And there's something really good about the ability to choose. We want to be free from constraints, like, that's a nice thing, really, right? That we live in a free country is a good thing, don't get me wrong. Right? But it's not the best thing. It's not the best thing. Um, Chesterton said that uh, the moral law, let's call this the moral law, is like the frame. Like the frame of a picture. Okay, and the frame of a picture sets limits. It gives it bounds. Right? You can't get outside of it. But that's what makes the picture beautiful. Right? Otherwise you have, I don't know, a picture without a frame and kind of you lose some of the beauty to it. It has no limits and no bounds. Okay, and that's the moral law. Right? The moral law points out to us what is good. It tells us about goodness. Right? And then we use our freedom in service of goodness. Okay? Um, there's one quote from the Catechism that I want to read. It's about this freedom of goodness. questions about that, I'm not going to find it. I think what I wanted to basically say was just simply what I already said, that, that freedom is in second place. It's in, it's in service of what is what is good. Right? So if we throw out the concept of good, right, then we're left with just, just free will. Right? Uh, which is, a, is not the, the vision of, of Christian freedom. Okay. Um, any questions about that? Very good. All right. Um, I think I'm going to just lay out a little bit of what we're going to cover for the next few classes, and we'll probably end end here. Okay. Um, so, because John brought up uh, virtue ethics, and uh, I said we get there, so I promise you that we'll get there. Okay, but just to kind of review what we did, uh, first is the moral law, morality of the passions, and acts. and natural law the virtues and grace okay. so next week we're going to cover conscience, the virtues and grace 
and that will kind of complete our two weeks on freedom, morality, and, and grace. Um, so, any last questions about anything we covered? Yeah. Um, what did you say about like, they weren't able to send in their dreams? Uh, that had to do with like the idea of like uh, freedom. And just like you know, just like sneezing, right? Is this act of uh, of a man? It's not a conscious act. Your will is not involved. Right? It's involuntary. Right? So in your dreams, you're not in that. In that, your will is not active. Right? You're you're really almost completely, yeah, completely passive. So your acts are involuntary. Your thoughts. You don't have control over your thoughts in your dreams right? at all. Now, if you spend all day thinking about certain, <coughs> let's say, you, you might be, yeah, you can't sin in your dreams. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but I think your dreams can be affected by what you do during the day somewhat. But you're still not culpable in your dreams, right? Because you're not, you're not, it's not free. Like um, isn't it like uh, sleepwalking? Like that's like a, that's an example like how you're not conscious you just yeah you're walking around whatever happens you just this right thing yeah there. I don't know if any court cases about like a, you murder somebody and you just sleepwalking yeah like, but, 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 but at the same time it's like you don't remember any of that none of that is yes so like so it can't conscious. be a sin because again sin is in it has to be a free act mm -hmm. What's that? <laughs> 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 is, is not acting also an act? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you're, what you don't do, right? let's say we, the, the good is required of us, but we must do what is good. We must avoid evil and do good. Okay, and this is where you get into sins of omission. Right? A sin of omission is when you needed to act, you had a duty to act, and you didn't. Right? You should have said something, and you didn't say anything. And those are good sins to, uh, to confess. Uh, they're kind of tricky ones that, that um, we, we don't take much notice of. Um, but, uh, In, in, the, in the Mass, at the Mass right, we pray, I confess to Almighty God and to Moses that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, what I've done and what I've failed to do. Again, can you be perfect? Why? Why? Because you're loved. Because Jesus has looked upon you with love. And he won't let you be anything except perfect. It takes a long time. We're like a block of marble. It's got to get chiseled out and polished. Right? Our whole life just goes on. But um, this is this is the moral life. And it's it's the life Worth, worth living, if you will. Because anything else is the life of an animal. It's not in accord. There's our great dignity, this free, free creatures. Okay. Great. It's fun to be teaching again. Um, feel a little rusty, but that's okay. I'll be here next week, and then we have spring break. So, um, until then, um, we're going to cover this eventually, but we're going to go through the five precepts of the church. But I want to just go over one of them maybe in this last minute. Okay, and that is the obligation to attend Sunday Mass. Okay, this is an obligation uh, that the, the church has given us. It's one of the commandments. We'll go over it uh, in, on this day, because it's the third commandment. Keep holy Sabbath. Um, but I would really, really highly encourage that if you are going to receive sacraments at the Easter Vigil, that you begin, you might, many of you already have, but that you begin attending Mass every Sunday. Okay? And if you're not yet Catholic, 
if you're not yet receiving communion, the best thing to do when times come for, to receive communion is just to come up like this and receive a blessing instead of receiving communion. Because to receive communion, you have to be uh, rightfully disposed to do that. Okay? Dorian is an expert at this. Dorian has been doing this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to this in church, like, do people understand that they do this? Yeah, oh, to do it in front of everyone. So, like, if you go to a different church. At a different church? Yeah, it's like, do they still get, like. This, should yeah. be, this, right, here, this right here should be a universal yeah. signal for <laughs> I'm not disposed to receive communion. But I'd love a blessing. <laughs> like this, is, this is what this means, okay? And uh, here at St. Paul's, it's pretty common. We have a lot of people come up for communion. They just go like this, and they receive a blessing, okay? And so, but the practice, the habit of going to Sunday Mass is of the utmost importance to begin to instill right now. Because as soon as you become Catholic, you receive sacraments, right, this is the obligation. Right? Which is really isn't much of an obligation, right? It's really one hour out of, out of a lot of hours that are in one <laughs> But this is, <laughs> but this, this is this is um, something we're thinking about, right? And I would say, quite honestly, right, if you're not, if you think that you cannot commit, if you don't think you're going to be attending Sunday Mass every Sunday for the rest of your life, it would be better not to be baptized. It would be better not to receive the sacraments of Easter. It would be better to wait. Because at the at the at your baptism or at your you know receptions of the Catholic Church, this is what you're taking on. Right? You're, you're, again, Jesus is loving you so much, but he's also challenging you. Right? And he's doing that you know, through through the church. Right? And this is that one uh, obligation that we're we're bound to. Right? And it is grave matter right, to attend Sunday Mass. Right? Now, if you're on your way to Sunday Mass and somebody's like dying on the side of the road, right, you help them. Right. <laughs> you act. You must act. <laughs> and you will miss, you miss Sunday Mass to help this person. Okay. So it's not it's not a, a type of obligation that betray or um, trumps prudence, if you will. Okay. But it is an obligation. It is an obligation from the precepts of the church. To attend Sunday Mass, right? Because that's the day Jesus rose from the dead, right? And there's no way we can remember Jesus um, in his in his resurrection from the dead if we don't at least take that one hour on the day that he rose from the dead to to get back to him. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's usually a pretty darn good time. Okay, that's it for tonight. Um, Let's just finish with a Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alright guys, see you next week. Yes, Sunday.